Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's class. We are studying Parashat Vaigash, and we're studying the holy words of Rav Shimshin Pinkus. And Rav Pinkus shares with us a thought on how much Jacob truly rejoiced over the news that Joseph was still alive. Take a look at your screen. We're going to look at these three, four verses over here. This is in Genesis chapter 45, verse 25. So the brothers meet Joseph. He reveals himself. He sends them back to go sum up the family. And they get to the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. Next verse, verse 26. They tell their father saying, Oh, Joseph, hi, Joseph is still alive. And they told him that he ruled over the entire land of Egypt. His heart was changed for he did not believe them. So first part is that the Torah is saying that jo jo Jacob did not believe that Joseph was alive. They continue talking. Verse 27. And then they continued and they explained the entire conversation they had with Joseph. So at that point, he still didn't believe them. Then then he sees the wagons that Joseph sent to carry him, to bring him to Egypt. And then the spirit of Jacob was revived because only at that point he believed them. I'm going to, I'm going to, Recap this again, just one more verse. Vayomer Yisrael, Rav od Yosef ben Ichai. Ah, enough, my son is, Joseph is still alive. Now I will go and see him before I die. So a lot happened. Um, a, lot of, a lot of different things are taking place over. So firstly, Rupinkis points out that the brothers are telling Jacob two things about Joseph. Number one, that he's alive, meaning he's alive and he's righteous. The Talmud says that a wicked person is literally considered dead even in this world, even though they may be breathing. And a righteous person is, is so alive that even after they pass away, they're still considered alive. So when they came and said that, oh, Joseph, hi, Joseph is alive. He's alive, he's vibrant, and he is righteous. Second piece of information they said is, by the way, he's the ruler of all, all of Egypt. They told him that Joseph is honored, respected. He's a VIP. So what does Jacob answer? Jacob says, I don't care about that second part. All I care about is that he's alive and righteous. He had no interest in the fact that he was viceroy and important and honorable and respected. The Torah is coming and teach us something over here. Very, very, very special. The Torah is saying that we learn from Jacob that his greatest joy and the greatest joy of a parent and a grandparent is their spiritual success and standing of their children and grandchildren. More than their fame and more than their wealth and any of their accomplishments, the greatest joy that a parent and grandparent has is their children and their grandchildren's righteousness, their spiritual standing and accomplishments when it comes to Torah, their spiritual standing and accomplishments when it comes to Torah and mitzvot. When Jacob sees Joseph for the first time, he says something peculiar. Take a look at your screen. He says... Chapter 46, verse 30, he says, Vayomer Yisrael el Yosef. Jo Jacob tells, or Israel tells Joseph, Amuta apam, now I can die this time. Now that I've seen your face, that you are still alive. That's so weird. It's like you haven't seen someone for so long. Oh, now I could die? What does that mean? Oh, look how fascinating. Our sages, Rabinka says, our sages explain to us. That when a person helps others and they do things to bring others merit, cause others to learn more Torah and to do more mitzvot, 
they receive perpetual reward for the good that that person will always continue doing even after that person passes away. So for argument's sake, let's say that Reuven inspired Shimon to do Teshuvah and to become a God-fearing Jew and a, an observant Jew. And then years later, Reuven passes away and Shimon still continues doing mitzvot and learning Torah. There is still more merit that is going to be given to Reuven even after he passes away because he ignited, he inspired Shimon. I think it says the same is true for a person's own children and grandchildren. All the more so it's true. That if a person's children and grandchildren live a life of Torah and mitzvot, the parents will receive perpetual reward even after they pass away. Even after 120. And unfortunately, your finger says the opposite is true as well. If a person's children and grandchildren don't follow B'derech Torah mitzvot, it's very, very harsh, but they will be punished after 120. When Jacob says, Rapinka says, when Jacob says, Amuta Pam, now I can die. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I am sure I'm only going to die once. Meaning at the moment of my death, I'm sure that's going to be the only time I die. I'm not going to keep on dying every moment over and over and over and being punished over and over and over. Because I am so certain that my children, my grandchildren, after seeing you, jo Yosef, are going to follow B'der Torah Mitzvot. They'll continue to continue giving him reward in the world to come over and over and over. And this is Rav Pinkus. How Rav Pinkus explains that Jacob was overjoyed when he saw Joseph. He was, again, almost not believing it to be true. But then when he saw with his own eyes, he saw his face, he saw his righteousness. He said, this is for real. And you know what? My, my mission has been accomplished. All 12 of my children, all of the tribes, are going to follow B'derech Torah Mitzvot. Now, Rav Pinkus shows a, takes us back to one verse that he said over here. This is in chapter 45, verse 27. He says, By the Beru Yosef, they told Joseph everything. They told, uh, they told Jacob everything that happened to Joseph. And then he sees the wagons Joseph sent for him. And then he believed them. Seeing the wagons. What does seeing the wagons have to do with anything? Well, Rashi tells us, oh, Joseph was sending Jacob a sign that the last thing they learned together was the topic of Igla Arufa, the decapitated calf. And when Jacob saw the wagons, which in Hebrew, Igla is like Agala, wagon, Joseph sent this specifically to hint to his father, that I remember with the last thing that we learned together, and I'm still continuing to learn. Now, Jacob said, ah, it must be my son. And the Torah says, Asher Shalach Yosef, that it was Joseph that sent it, not Paro. So, Rapinkas analyzes, he says, one second. There's a famous story about the Grada, the Gaon Vilna, that one time a woman who was married for many years, her husband went missing. And the husband himself was gone for a couple of years. And all of a sudden, a fellow shows up claiming that he is the husband of this wife. And the wife's like, that's not my husband. And she, he's like, yes, I am. Well, they went to Beitin, and Beitin said, we'll prove it. So this fellow explained many, many things around the house. This is where this is, and these are the children, and this is where that is, and this is this, and this is where we went. All different details, which, believe it or not, really, really seem like he would be the husband. And maybe for whatever reason, the wife is trying to lie and say that that's not her husband. Finally, they went to the Gaon Vilna, and the Gra asked him questions about where he used to pray, which synagogue he would pray in, and where his set seat was. And at that point, the man was stumped and he was unable to answer. And they finally ruled that he was an imposter and he was embarrassed and ran out and excommunicated. Fine. The grass students came to him and said, how did you know to ask such a question? He said, look how beautiful this is. He says that. 
everything that we do in life, this is a powerful lesson. Everything we do in life, any, any dilemma, any question we have in life, the answer is in our Torah. And he says, when a person is trying to do something bad, they don't think of holy matters. They don't think about the goodness. Yes, when an imposter is trying to imposter himself to be to be to be a, another another man, they're going to say everything about the household items, everything about the family. But to think of which synagogue he would pray at and his set seat and who he would sit next to, that's already a holy matter that that unless it was genuine, he wouldn't really know. And then they asked him, "So where do you know this from?" He says, we learned this from Yaakov Avinu. When Yaakov Avinu was looking to see if Yosef or if their brothers, if whether, whether Yosef was an imposter or whether the brothers were, were lying and, 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 and creating this, this person that didn't really exist anymore, what did he do? He was looking for a sign of holiness. And once he saw a sign of holiness, which was the last topic of Torah that they learned, he knew it was for real. So in life, we have to realize that this is the way of righteous, righteous people, of tzaddikim, and we can be the same, to find answers to our questions and answers to our dilemmas in the Torah. This was exactly what Yaakov did. This is exactly what the Gra did. If a person ever has a doubt of is something for real or not, try to see if there's a speck of holiness over there. If there is a speck of holiness here by Yosef showing Jacob the last thing that he learned with him. And by that story of that individual, that imposter, not knowing about where his, his synagogue was and where he would sit in the synagogue is a powerful lesson. May Kadosh Baruch Hu bless us that we should always look into our Torah. We should find answers to our questions, solutions to our dilemmas, because the answers are in our Torah, our written Torah, and our oral Torah, may Kadosh Baruch Hu bless us to keep on learning it and understanding and growing and growing together. Amen v'amen.